Right, this is a lecture on portfolio management and it's part of the mathematical finance course. I think this is going to be quite a long video, but you'll probably already know that by the, the runtime. Right, first, we want to define a portfolio as giving you a, a set of what you own. So it's just given us these different values, x1, n, all the way up to y, n, uh, which are telling us how many stocks we own, how many shares of each stock we own. So the x1 value will be you own 32 of the first stock and so on. This yn at the end is how many bonds you own. And if you own zero bonds, and this is what's known as being liquid, uh, with these new, with the new portfolio, obviously there's a lot more to calculate, so we can give it in the form here. Uh, give the wealth in the form like that, which is just given a sum of k equals 1 to m of the different pairs. And if you want it to be a self-financing, then this self-financing is where you take, you get no more in outside investment in, you're just rearranging the stocks that you own, so you can sell three of the first one so that you can buy two of the second one. And this is given in the form here, so it's just the same as here, but we have n is m plus 1, m plus 1 here in the form in where they are. It's admissible when the wealth is positive at all times. And one thing that's going to be very useful in this uh, lecture, especially, is weights. So if we're given, we're usually given wealth in this form which is the number of stocks we own of share what uh, of stock one, the number of shares we own of stock two. And the weight is calculated wi equals xi si zero over v zero. So the weight of the first one is showing what percentage we are of our wealth we're gonna put into that one share. So if this was 20, then and our wealth was 1,000, then we could put in 20, we're putting 200 pounds in to buy the first share. Right, more definitions I'm afraid. Uh, this one's, we're just showing how the weights can uh, be used with the return. So KV is equal to W1, K1 plus W2, K2. You might want to look at some of the previous videos, which there'll be links all over the thing, I think, anyway. Uh, we can use expectation with these, so the weights aren't really affected. Covariance, you should know, we're not going to need this down here. This is equal to expectation of uh, e times x, so these could be your different k's, minus expectation of x times expectation of y. If these uh, two values here are independent, which most of the time there will be, being that it's going to be stocks, then because the stocks don't affect each other, they're going to be independent. So this is actually going to be equal to this, which means the covariance will be zero. Uh, standard deviation we did last time as well. If we square this, we get the variance. You should know that. And this is going to be less than or equal to the maximum of your standard, de uh, the standard deviation of the wealth is going to be less than or equal to the maximum of the different standard deviations. Right. The variance, if we wanted to calculate the variance of something quite long, so we've got our different, if, uh, we've got x1s up to xr, the, if these are going to be our different returns, so the k's, and the lambda ones, they could be the, they could be the, double, they could be the weights. If we want to calculate the variance of that, then we have the formula here which is the sum from i is 1 to r of lambda i squared times the variance of xi plus 2 times the sum from 1. 1 is less than or equal to i, which is less than j, which is less than or equal to r. Uh, this is lambda i times lambda j times the covariance of xi comma xj. And you might, you might need to use that in some questions. Not here today. The correlation coefficient, this is showing how spread out everything is. And this is 
donated us. Oh, I forgot what that symbol's called. But never mind. Uh, Mew. I forgot what it's called. Uh, X lowercase subscript X Y. It's covariance X Y divided by the standard deviation of X and the standard deviation of Y. And this is always going to be between, between minus one and one. If it's one, then it means that they're all perfectly together. So they'll all go. If you were to plot the points, they would all go across a straight line. And minus one would mean just going the other way. And in between uh, is how spread out they are. So if it was zero, then there's going to be no 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 pattern at all. But the closer to the more positive is the closer they are together. Right, now if we wanted to calculate the portfolio with the minimum risk, so we want to work out uh, what weights we want to assign to each stock in a two stock scenario, then we use this formula here. So th the weights are going to be a percentage, so because like I said before it could be 20% of your stocks are going to be in there, and we calculate it like this, so we have standard deviation of 1 squared minus correlation coefficient 1, 2, standard deviation 1, standard deviation 2, uh, standard deviation 1 squared plus standard deviation 2 squared minus 2 times correlation coefficient 1, 2 uh, times standard deviation 1 times standard deviation 2. And they, they tend to denote it as S0 in books, but I put it there, but I don't really see the point. Um, so once you found this is the weight 2, the weight 1 is calculated as you can guess, which is just 1 minus the weight 2 to give you the other percentage. Right, we've got an example. This example is actually, I, I, I couldn't but, uh, make one, it's from this book. Marek Kapinski and Thomas Zakwinu, Mathematics for Finance and Introduction to Financial Engineering. It's a good book I've got from the library. Right, we want to compute, we, this is just looking at weights, we want to compute the V1 of a portfolio, so the wealth at the end with uh, the wealth at the beginning of 100, and it's got two securities, so two different types of stock, with weights 25% for the first stock, and we're going to spend 75% of our money on the second stock. So, the first stock, uh, it starts with a value of 45 and finishes with a value of 33, the, no, and finishes with a value of 48. The second stock starts with 33 and finishes with a value of 32. So that one goes down. So all we want to do is we're given our weights, we're given our stocks, we're given some wealth. So it, it's quite simple that we can just put it into our wealth formula and calculate how many we've purchased. So we're going to have 100 is the first uh, value, x1 times 45 from here plus x2 times the second value, 33 from here. So we've got our 25%, our 75%, our initial wealth underneath, and the values, and we just rearrange this, and we'll get x1 is equal to 5 ninths. We've got 5 ninths of a, of a share in uh, the first one, first stock, and 2 and 3 elevenths in the second stock. So, and then all you have to do is simply put this into the formula. So now you've got these change these values for 48 and 32 and that will give you your wealth which isn't that much different which is you've lost 60p so you still lost them uh, the way it does it in the book is it does it this way but it just rearranges to get the x1 on its own and puts that into the final equation from here as we can see here so we've just got our x1 and x2, put them in here and here, and gives us that. And we can just get our different values from all over here, put them in here, and get our wealth at time one. This next one I put together, um, I tried to fit as much calculation in as I could, because the only examples I could find, were they told you all the values to start off with. So we want to find the portfolio with the minimum risk. And we're given two stocks, S1 and S2. At the origin, at the original time, it's 50, and it can either go up to 60 at 0.4% chance, or down to 45 with a chance of 0.6. The other one starts at 40, can go up to 44 with 0.3, or down to 38 with 0.7. Now what we want to do first, 
we're going to need the correlation coefficient, we're going to need the covariance, and we're going to need the standard deviation in order to calculate that big formula we had at the end. First off, the correlation coefficient, that's going to be zero because these two are independent. So that makes it nice and easy, which also makes it easy as well because the correlation coefficient will then be zero because we have a zero divided by the two standard deviations. Right, now we just need to find the standard deviation. So first we need the expectation, expected return for each of the stocks. So we've got K1 and K2. If you can't remember how to calculate this, then there'll be a link there, which is, gives us the value 0.02. And for the second one, minus 0.05. We can see this is about right. We go up, we go up 10 here, down 5 here, about the same, so it's quite close to zero. Here we've got a bigger chance of going down, but again, you're gonna make twice as much if you go up, so that's going down a little bit. Next, what we want to do is put those into our formula for the standard deviation. So all these numbers now go into here. We've got our standard deviation for the K1. This is where is it? Here, 0 0.2. This is KU1. That's that's what it's donated in the other video. KU1 from here minus this minus that uh, squared times the probability here, and then we've got our other probability down here. We've got our minus uh, 0 0.1 because it's going down 10%. That's where that comes from, which is here. Uh, minus uh, the expectation, the expected return, which gives us the value 0 0.146967. You get nicer numbers with actual questions, as you can expect. And the same for the second standard deviation. So we've got our 0 0.1, that one goes there, this there, this there. So those become a plus. And then we've got the probabilities as well, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, which gives us this value. Now it's just a simple case of putting that into our formula which we had here, but like I said before, the covariance make, uh, is going to be zero because they are independent stocks, and which leads to the covariance correlation coefficient to being zero as well because we're multiplying on top by the covariance and underneath by all these standard deviations. So now we can put all the standard deviations we got in like, well, first we can ignore these parts because they equal zero. Get this, get this. So we want to invest 82% of our money in the second stock, which means we want to invest 18% in our first stock. I hope that made sense.